Hi, what's happening? Y'all should Rico from Street Scores. You can tell by the background behind me that we are here to be petty today because Washington Commanders quarterback, rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels apparently stole the Week 6 Offensive Rookie of the Week award from Caleb Williams. We're going to dive into why the Bears fans cannot be mad and complain like they are on the internet right now. We're also going to take a look at some examples. We're about to have fun today, but we also have some updates to give y'all as far as like injury updates for the Commanders for this upcoming game against the Panthers so we're back to business as usual but we got to spend the majority of this video to have a little bit of fun first and Cliff Kingsbury also spoke to the media as well we're gonna dive into some of the most interesting things that he said because some of them are like okay noted type of thing so make sure i stay tuned without further ado let's go ahead and dive into all of that but before we do make sure you stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release the formats of an opinion video just like this one make sure you stay tuned for all of the content we'll be live streaming the upcoming game against the panthers of course i'll be coming out with a preview video with all of the final injury update who's playing who's not of course like the panthers weaknesses and strips what we need to attack what we need to worry about in order to beat them keys to victory all of that type of stuff most important matchups and and also be on the lookout because for all of my channel members, I will be working on those exclusive film sessions very soon. I want to get at least one done by tonight and at least two or three done before the upcoming Panthers game. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this video, man. Let's get it. Adam. Adam. All right, so I first saw it from the Washington Commanders themselves tweeting it from their official Twitter account at Commanders. They said times five with a graphic that says Pepsi Zero Sugar Rookie of the Week. Once again, it's a picture of Jaden Daniels. It's a really nice graphic as well. And they said five times because that is now his fifth time doing it. He won it week one. Then you had Braylon Allen win it week two, and then Jaden Daniels has won it every other week since. Week three, week four, week five, week six. And how dare Braylon Allen go out there and have a good performance one week, of a good enough performance to where Jaden Daniels hasn't been able to win it every single week. And there was that week two matchup against the, the Giants where I was like, I don't know, maybe they may give it to Malik Neighbors, but they gave it to Jaden Daniels then as well. So again, now that's five times in six weeks. Come on now. Like, stop playing with them, man. Like, it's not even fair. And in, just in case if you were wondering, RG3 won Rookie of the Week seven times in his rookie season of 2012. And the record actually belongs to Ben Roethlisberger, who won it nine times in 2004. And Jaden Daniels already has five in just a month and a half. So just to let you know, he's two more away from RG3 from breaking his record for the franchise. And then he's four away from breaking the all-time record of Ben Roethlisberger. And I think he can do it. We're only six weeks in. We have technically 12 more weeks, but 11 more games to go. I definitely think he can win it four more times. Probably even more than that and blow the the, the whole record out the water. Shouts out to Rep the District because he replied by saying it's no longer fair at this point. Then you also have Rigo's Rag. He tweeted, just going to go check on Bears Twitter. Be right back. And I mean, I thought that was hilarious. I didn't do like a full deep dive into Bears Twitter. Like I didn't go look for myself, but seeing all of the commanders people I follow, I've been seeing a lot of Bears fans complaining. We're going to dive into that later. But I did want to point out the fact that, hey, man, you know, I'm from Atlanta. You know, we Coca-Cola up and down. But this year, Pepsi all right with me, man. I might have to go get one. I haven't had one in I don't know how long, how many years, but man, I like the way they think. They seem like good people over there. I don't know why, but they just seem like the, some good people over there. They seem like my type of people. But to be completely honest, yeah, Caleb Williams had better stats overall this weekend. Like against Jacksonville, he was 23 of 29, 226 yards with a 79.3 completion percentage, four touchdowns and one interception, a rating of 124.4 and a QBR of 88.4. And Jaden Daniels against the Ravens, 24 of 35, 269 yards, a 68.6 completion percentage. That's less. He had two touchdowns, which are less. But, in, but then he didn't have an interception, even though I'm not going to lie to completely admit and to be completely transparent. He did throw an interception 
interception straight to a DB's chest and they just didn't catch it. But even without the interception, there is an argument to be made that even if you did, you even without including the interception that Jaden Daniels, you know, it should have been caught. Caleb Williams had the better week because he had the better stats, right? Jaden Daniels also going to back to passer rating. He had a 110.3 and a QBR of 74.4, both lower than Caleb Williams. But I would push back against that to be completely objective before we get to the petty part of this, to be completely objective, to look at the stats and to look at context and everything like that. Jaden Daniels did go against a great Ravens defense while Caleb Williams went against the Jaguars defense that is even missing my Georgia dog and their best corner you can even argue probably by far in Tyson Campbell right now and even with Tyson Campbell even if he were healthy that Jaguars defense is still not even anywhere near on the same level as this Ravens defense I would also add additional context that even though Jaden Daniels is O-line and offensive coordinator are arguably better this season you can definitely make those arguments I wouldn't be mad at you if you felt that way but one thing that we cannot argue is that Caleb Williams has the better receivers and for sure and the part that's super overlooked and underrated when it comes to like you know rookie quarterbacks and having a great situation around them is the fact that he has the way better defense skip way better defense how about just an elite defense that Jaden Daniels does not have you know how much better a quarterback can play when you are confident like how much more calm you can be when you just know for a fact that your defense can get stops when you need them versus Jaden Daniels, who almost has to be basically perfect to barely beat the Bengals and almost perfect to still lose against the Ravens. So yeah, Caleb Williams has the better stats on paper this week, but Jaden Daniels deserves a boost from like degree of difficulty. At least if we're going to do like this on a, some type of numerical grading system, you got it great on a, on a, on a curve for Jaden Daniels. And I feel like if Caleb Williams played the Ravens, Ravens this season especially like if we did like an alternate universe he played them on week six at the same time so that neither of the quarterbacks have more time to prepare and to get better and improve through several weeks of football I feel like he wouldn't perform as well and again just going back to grading on the curve I mean just act like Jaden Daniels had to take like a, a, an AP test and he only had 30 minutes to take it versus Caleb Williams taking a regular class test and had all day to do I just feel like there's a difference and you know maybe Caleb Williams got the higher grade but you got to look at the circumstances in the context man and even moving beyond that shouts out to Grant Paulson for bringing up this good point Caleb Williams threw four touchdowns and four incompletions that weren't batted at the line and, and so the other ones literally came from batted down balls from the defensive line Jaden Daniels still beat him out for rookie of the week commanders fans are getting out there and voting in a big way this is a voters award also shouts out to Jay at Redskins call he said this is hysterical to me the one week where you could say hey Caleb Williams may have looked better than Jaden Daniels and Jaden Daniels still won this award barring injury it's literally over with for this award as far as rookie of the year for sure so my point is Y'all should have voted better, Bears fans. Y'all are complaining, but it's y'all fault. If anything, Caleb Williams has room to be mad because his fan base didn't go out there and vote like they should have. This is a skill issue, and I'm not going to lie. If Caleb Williams didn't win Rookie of the Week this past week, Week 6, I'm convinced that the Commanders fans alone will never let anybody else win it i don't know how we let braylon allen get away with it but then again we didn't necessarily know what we had just yet Jaden daniels didn't really break onto the scene until like the second half of the giants game and then that Bengals game showed us everything that we needed to know and then these last few games have just showed us that that was just not a flash in the pan that is who he is permanently moving forward he's only going to get better so i'm just letting you know right now I, I i don't think anybody else is going to win it just off of the fact that commanders fans won't let anybody else win it and i don't see Jaden daniels ever just not continuing to get better not only do i not see him getting worse i don't see him not only getting better because i don't even i think Jaden daniels made arguably like three of his very best throws against the Ravens even though overall it wasn't like the perfect game against the Bengals again in context it was against a way better defense and if you're just talking about th putting on your grown man pants and making elite NFL quarterback level throws you could argue that out of his top 10 best throws all season so far three or five of them came against the Ravens like it, it was just that level of degree of difficulty the way he was completing passes scanning the defense reading the defense going through his progressions all of the stuff that you want a quarterback to do from the pocket the time Tom Brady type of stuff not only just winning with your legs but the Tom Brady from in the pocket type of stuff Jaden Daniels excelled at that but also 
I do want to point out the fact that I feel like a lot of Commanders fans voted as much as they could because of the fact that we lost to the Ravens on some like I'm leaving here with something type of mentality you know what I'm saying like we went in something in week six we didn't win the game but our quarterback gonna win offensive rookie of the week I'll tell you that also shouts out to this Bears fan at Bear season on Twitter he said we should be finding out in the next few hours of Caleb Williams won rookie of the week he was without a doubt the best rookie last week if he doesn't win it it'll just confirm how skewed the award is to be honest and shouts out to my dog Rio Robinson make sure you follow him on Twitter subscribe to his YouTube and everything and I believe he even did a live stream breaking all of this down about this whole rickety so make sure you go check that out after you're done checking out this video but he re he quote tweeted this and replied and said it is a fan of voted award so tell you and he cussed them out fan blank 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 fan base get active and hop of our quarterbacks and then you know another explicit word that i probably don't want to use here but you know what i'm saying like and that's a great point like y'all are complaining but it's literally y'all fault it's not like there's just some NFL Illuminati that's just or some the script writers in the back saying Jaden Daniels has to win as many awards as possible. This is a fan of voted award. So be mad at your fans for not stepping up or be mad at the rest of the NFL for neutral fans that aren't commanders and Bears fans for still feeling like Jaden Daniels is the better quarterback, even specifically just for week six alone. Don't be mad at us. Don't be mad at us. But even if you do say Caleb Williams deserved to win week six's offensive rookie of the week award, like even just say he did deserve it. You can't deny that Jaden Daniels is better is the better quarterback today and so far this season and is obviously a distant favorite to win offensive rookie of the year right now. Because look right now on your screen. Look at this direct comparison between Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams. And out of all of the lines that we have on the screen, Caleb Williams has six greens out of all of those lines Caleb Williams has Jaden Daniels in completions in attempts which is like I mean those completions aren't necessarily that impressive when you've had 33 more attempts and yet only five more completions so honestly take away those two greens as well those one don't even those don't even matter so then maybe you can say I mean more touchdowns even though he has more attempts it is what it is he has more passing touchdowns even though Jaden Daniels outpaces them by rushing touchdowns easily so it's just kind of like you know there's a reason Jaden Daniels doesn't have as many passing touchdowns because sometimes he can just do it himself with his own legs and get a touchdown by running the ball himself and overall Jaden Daniels has more touchdowns than Caleb Williams 10 to 9 so even that stat you know I mean cool yeah he has more passing touchdowns specifically by three but Jaden Daniels has more overall touchdowns by one so you can delete that one right there and then maybe like yards per attempt you can give Caleb Williams right there. You can give him that. But snaps and snaps per game, I mean, those aren't greens that necessarily say that this quarterback is better than the other one. So you can probably only give Caleb Williams the 6.8 yards per attempt right now. That's it. That's the only advantage that he has over Jaden Daniels so far. Speaking of advantages over each other, look at this chart right here by the 33rd team. Dan Pazuda basically does his quarterback rankings based on overall skill set in 2024 production you have Jaden Daniels one you have Caleb Williams 16 it's not even close again he's basing this on individual skill sets and also what they've done so far in 2024 he's including EPA and success rate all of the advanced stats into this and so hey man Jaden Daniels is the better quarterback period stop talking to me even just Jaden Daniels alone Right now, he's leading the NFL in completion percentage over expected. Basically, like if a wide receiver is covered or whatever the defense is doing, you know, it's not just completion percentage. It's based on like the receiver's not open and the quarterback has to throw them open. He has to make them open. A receiver may be wrong. The quarterback makes them right. Or maybe the offensive coordinator didn't call the right play and the quarterback makes the offensive coordinator right. Whatever the situation is, Jaden Daniels is making this team better than any other quarterback is in the NFL right now because Jaden Daniels' completion percentage over expected is 6.4% plus 6.4%. Brock Purdy is a distant second at plus 5.2%. Then it's Joe Burrow at 4.4%, Jalen Hurts at 4.3%, and Kirk Cousins at 3.9%. Jaden Daniels is nearly double the rate of Kirk Cousins who's in fifth place so i don't want to hear it when we're talking about degree of difficulty Jaden daniels is still finding a way to get it 
done. Basically, that's saying that Jaden Daniels is able to complete passes to receivers that are covered better than anybody else in the NFL right now. So you want to talk about Jaden Caleb Williams doesn't have help. Look at what Jaden Daniels is doing in spite of the fact that he doesn't have as much help on the outside as far as receivers go. And shouts out to JP Finley for tweeting this. He said, great line from Barry Zverluga about the rapid ascent of Washington. Barry said, quote, I don't think it's a stretch to say that this organization that has been such a an S show for so long is now best positioned long term in the NFC East. And that's astonishing to say, unquote. But you want to know why? Shouts out to Sando NFL talking about Jaden Daniels is hot NFL star. He said, quote, even if you thought he was going to be good, how could you think that it would be this? It is six straight games of really good ball, unquote. I completely agree. Again, I was a big Jaden Daniels fan coming out of the draft. That's who I wanted the Washington Commanders to take. And I'm even surprised by how, like, if you lead of a start he's had and how much better I think he'll end up being. His ceiling is even higher than I thought it would be. Because even when it was the Drake May versus Jaden Daniels ceiling conversations, you know, the, the general narrative, Jaden Daniels is ready to start day one, but, it, but Drake May has the higher ceiling. And I kept pushing back against that. I'm like, why does Jaden Jaden Daniels not have an elite ceiling. Yeah, maybe he doesn't have, maybe he has like 98% or 95% of Drake May's arm strength and off platform throw ability. But Drake May at best has 60, 70% of Jaden Daniels' legs. So if we're trying to apply like a numerical value to this situation, I'm not understanding why people are underplaying Jaden Daniels' ceiling. So even with me viewing it from that way, I still didn't expect this ceiling to be like that. I didn't think Tom Brady from the pocket type of stuff. But even on top of that, Let's just be petty to the Bears fans real quick because shouts out to Jared underscore NFL 89. He, he wanted to point out the fact that Bears fans have been calling Jaden a screen merchant all season. And this is before this award even came out. The offensive rookie of the weird drama, uh, drama that we have going on right now. This was back on October 15th, back on Tuesday, he tweeted this. Bears fans have been calling Jaden a screen merchant all season. I wonder who, out of Caleb and Jaden, has more thrown screens. It must be Jaden, surely, right? Except it's not. Jaden's thrown 37 screens to Caleb 38. They can both be good, relax Bears fans is his message. So yeah, whenever you hear Bears fans complaining about like Jaden Daniels, all he does is throw screens, remind them that Caleb Williams has thrown more screens than Jaden Daniels. It's not by a wide margin, but if you ask Bears fans, they would tell you that Jaden Daniels has thrown more than him by a wide margin, when really it's only a one screen difference and Caleb Williams is actually leading. So yeah, maybe Caleb Williams... Just benefited a doubt for the Bears fans. Got snubbed from winning Offensive Rookie of the Week this week. But I promise you, when Jaden Daniels wins Offensive Rookie of the Year, Caleb wouldn't be snubbed from that. These folks over there mad about a week. Us Commanders fans care about a year. Y'all think it's too small over there, big dog. I'm sorry. And what's even funnier is that the Bears on a bye week this week. So now Caleb Williams has to sit down and watch Jaden Daniels have a monster game against a really bad and really injured Panthers defense. Arguably the easiest matchup our offense is going to have all season. And then right after that, the week after that, they face off against each other. And I don't want any excuses from Caleb Williams nor his fan base because your defense is way better than Jaden Daniels' defense. So when y'all face off, you are going against the easier defense. So I don't want to hear nothing from Bears fans after Jaden Daniels outperforms him head-to-head -head in a matchup against each other. Also, shouts out to Shane Peacher for this on Twitter. He said, I'm telling you, all of this is going to turn into a real rivalry, especially after next week when one fan base is going to be bitter. And I really believe both quarterbacks are legit and we're going to see a bunch of playoff matches between the two as well both fan bases were sleeping giants that were just in quarterback purgatory and now they both have potentially great quarterbacks this is going to be fun to watch for many years down the line i completely agree and also since we're keeping count now heading into week seven, Jaden Daniels is racking up awards. Shouts out to at DMV Commanders for providing this. Just to remind y'all and update y'all on the, all of the awards that Jaden Daniels is already on one. He has a five times Pepsi Rookie of the Week award. We know that just that's what we've been talking about all video. Nickelodeon Most Valuable Player. NFC Offensive Player of the Week. How about NFL Offensive Rookie of the Month? And also a FedEx Air Player of the Week. And he also added a Hemi Award because Jaden Daniels is definitely winning overall right now between him and Caleb Williams. So yeah, 
Maybe Caleb Williams deserved week six. But what about all them other weeks, y'all? How about them? Let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk about that. And I don't I, I don't like how some of them are doing like this complete 180 now and acting like they don't care at all after Caleb Williams didn't win it. And it's not all Bears fans at all. Because most of them are actually logical human beings, would you believe? It's just the bad ones that are the loudest right now on the internet, especially on Twitter. Because one of my closest friends is a Bears fan, and we salute each other every week to each for each other's quarterbacks. Like, hey, man, I see your quarterback. Hey, man. I see your quarterback. Y'all doing y'all thing. Hey, y'all doing y'all thing. But then you have this guy right here as you look on the screen. The Bears season guy that we brought up earlier. Remember the tweet that he had where he said he was without a doubt the best rookie last week. If he doesn't win it, I'll just confirm how skewed the award is, to be honest. And he was really excited, too, because at the beginning of the tweet, as you can see, he said, we should be finding out in the next few hours if Caleb Williams won Offensive Rookie of the Week and all of that. And then you see right next to it, as soon as he finds out that Caleb Williams didn't win it, he tweets, Jaden Daniels can have these meaningly, meaningless Rookie of the Week awards. Now suddenly he doesn't care. Caleb Williams is destined for more and aiming higher we move on i mean it is what it is man i just thought that was funny i had to point that out now let's get down to serious business i have a few injury updates from y'all from practice now of course later on in the day once they actually come out with the real injury report i will give y'all like who was limited who was a full participant who was out and everything like that when i come out with my second video later on tonight but just to let you know terry mcclellan and zach Ertz practiced again today after having a vets day rest yesterday even though terry mcclellan took a vets day off but he was still like limited so he still did a couple of things but they kind of let him rest zach Ertz just completely took the entire day off then you have brian robinson coming back from a knee injury did not play against the Ravens and maybe that game would have been different if we had them but he and Doris Armstrong with the rib injury were both there at the start of practice that's really good news and then Armstrong was working on the side field so maybe not as great of news as we hoped maybe he's going to be pronounced like technically identified as limited he's going to be labeled limited when they come out with the injury report later today for the Thursday's practice out of the way though positive news because I saw like Doris Armstrong tweet something where he had like an IV hooked up to him from his own Instagram story or something like that immediately after the Ravens game. So I was really worried, but he didn't go on IR with Jonathan Allen and Javante John Baptiste. And at least he's participating in practice somewhat, even if it is limited. But then you have Quan Martin with a shoulder injury wearing a non contact jersey in practice. He was limited yesterday. Now he has a non contact jersey on the day. So I'm assuming that's technically he's going to be labeled as limited again. Something to watch. But wide receiver Noah Brown, who was limited when Wednesday actually participated in today's practice during the open portion to the media so was Brian Robinson so those guys seem like they're pretty much full good to go whereas on the Panther side of things boy it is bad right now like just off top Jadavion Clowney and De Deontay Johnson did not participate in practice today let's just go down the list Jonathan Brooks knee did not participate in practice today Claudin Cherilis hamstring Jadavion Clowney shoulder Josie Jewell um, hamstring and groin Deontay Johnson ankle Taylor Moten elbow John Radigan knee illness a sean robinson knee then they even have like six more people limited and then they have like seven guys full but i know we're worried about injuries and we're complaining but they have way more guys on ir than we have we just put our first two on there they have already sent like six seven starters on the, on the defense to ir already and then even outside of the guys on ir you have like star contributors like just davion Clowney and deontay johnson who haven't even practiced yet this week um did not participate in practice Wednesday nor today so hey man them Panthers whoo I feel bad for y'all man especially y'all about to face an angry commanders team that is upset about their with their loss against the Ravens and they're coming into this game motivated that's why I'm not worried about this being a trap game I'm excited and then you have Brian Robinson earlier this morning I, don't, I guess maybe this was before practice or maybe immediately afterwards but Brian Robinson had an interview in the locker room with the media it was like 50 seconds long and they asked him how he felt he said he was feeling very optimistic for week seven he feels like he's basically good to go and then also before we get up out of here I have a few updates from Cliff Kingsbury because he spoke to the media after practice he said some really interesting things first of all he said that Brian Robinson is quote a big part of what we do both emotionally and physically unquote he said that there's a joy he plays with with the game that rubs off on others obviously a tremendous player it would be a big lift to have Brian Robinson back and that's a great point I never really thought about the fact that not even just production wise and you know even just styles you know matchups makes make fights and Austin Eckler and Jeremy 
McNichols are great running backs, but they're more so receiving backs. Brian Robinson is the thumper. You can see in certain situations that we just could not gain a yard when we really needed to, like, goal line on the one-yard line or, or third and one. We That's where Brian Robinson comes in. But even beyond just that, emotionally, you see him mic'd up at times. He's like the big energy on the sideline, and that does pay dividends. That helps everybody else play better, play more inspired football. So not having Brian Robinson out there on the field, healthy, on the sideline, cheering everybody up, does affect how we play, especially on offense. Also, Kingsbury said that Jaden Daniels' success against the Blitz is is phenomenal he's one of the best in the nfl right now and it, uh, he also pointed out the fact he wanted to give credit to the offensive line he said it starts up front with the offensive line daniels himself gives a lot of credit to his line as well especially center tyler biotish he's the one that's given credit for setting a lot of the protections so that is an a1 signing from Adam Peters right there in free agency to bring in a guy that can help Jaden Daniels in that way. That's literally why we brought in Tyler Biotis. And then on top of that, he's also performing as one of the best centers in the NFL as far as like pressures allowed, QB hits, and all of that type of stuff. I mean, this is just absolutely insane. The free agency class that Adam Peters has put together this year, already just in year one of a rebuild. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Now, moving on. Cliff Kingsbury also mentioned that that flea flicker screen that like I, I don't remember ever seeing that before. He said that that was a Jeff Brom play. He was the head coach of Purdue when David Blau, the right now commander's assistant quarterbacks coach, was the quarterback for the Boyle Makers. So, hey man, shouts out to Cliff Kingsbury. This goes back to what I spoke talked about like a few weeks ago that you see evidence of cliff kingsbury pulling ideas from everybody and he's just not only is he being a great offensive coordinator a great play caller great play designer but i feel like he deserves a ridiculous amount of credit that he's not receiving right now just really when you look around the internet of doing a masterful job of orchestrating everything and allowing a big time collaboration from so many different guys you see anthony lynn's influence from some things that we're doing in the run game that the 49ers have done in previous years you're seeing bobby johnson who we brought over from the giants to be our offensive lines coach you're seeing us run plays that literally like the Giants specifically ran last year for Saquon Barkley we're doing that with Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler you're seeing things from Brian Johnson our assistant head coach our offensive passing game coordinator who came from the Eagles you're seeing literal plays that the Eagles have run with Jalen Hurts last year when he's that when he was their offensive coordinator that we're running now with Jaden Daniels like and then on top of that just this random play that Cliff Kingsbury took and, and heard out from our our assistant quarterbacks coach you know how far down the tier list he is in the coaching staff and for Cliff Kingsbury to hear him out and be like okay we're gonna practice that all throughout the week maybe probably for the past couple of weeks and then deploy this at the right time against the Ravens and then it works so well we've ended up picking up like 30 yards on it or something like that and I don't know if it will ever work again but shouts out to Cliff Kingsbury for not only reaching deep within his own bag but having access and knowing how to perfectly orchestrate everybody else's bags to one collaborative big bag that we're pulling out for offensive greatness right now we're on a historical pace and cliff kingsbury deserves immense credit for that jd daniels is balling offensive line doing their thing running backs wide receivers tight ends but i mean that in itself is absolutely insane also i do want to point out the fact that david blaw has been highly spoken of around the league from his days of being a quarterback and a lot of people felt like us getting him as an assistant quarterbacks coach was another big steal from um adam peters this offseason as far as like hiring i know we all looked at cliff kingsbury and all of the different like getting ken norton jr as our linebackers coach anthony lynn as our running backs coach and our, our run game coach coordinator and like all of the different front office hires Brandon Saucena and all of those guys but David Blau was another sleeper where it's like hey man you now like Sean McVay and Bobby Slowick and Ben Johnson like people are looking at David Blau our assistant quarterbacks coach right now is maybe the next one of those so keep that in mind long term also, Kingsbury said that Daniels' development has allowed us to expand what they do quicker than anticipated. So basically, Cl Cliff Kingsbury is further along and deeper into the playbook as far as what plays we can even teach y'all and, and even call in games and expect to actually work and be efficient than we expected because Jaden Daniels is just that elite. So shouts out to Jaden Daniels for allowing this engine to run as fast as it is right now because Cliff Kingsbury was thinking about, you know, we'll take it, we'll be subtle, we'll take it slow. Low, we'll eventually get there he's like man Jaden Daniels is his work ethic is so insane and he's just so great 
that we're already way deeper into the playbook than we expected and that has to be fun because i know if if our offense is able to play it to be able to go at this excessive rapid rate right now then i know opposing defenses can't keep up they're like okay they did this last week but then we come out and do something completely different and add a whole nother couple of layers to our offense because Jaden Daniels was able to pick it up that quickly so hey man shouts out to Jaden Daniels for that and also shouts out to Cliff Kingsbury for even trusting Jaden Daniels with that because a lot of offensive coordinators may even see Jaden Daniels and have a Jaden Daniels in their possession and be like nah we're gonna do it by the book and I'm such a genius I have such a big ego we're still gonna take it slow in spite of what I'm seeing from my quarterback so thank you a lot there I mean, the, really, the last few minutes of this video has been just a big thank you to Cliff Kingsbury. Because even going back to Jaden Daniels winning Defensive Rookie of the Week, Cliff Kingsbury deserves a lot of credit for that as well. Now, moving on, I have a last couple of things I want to update y'all on. First of all, the Baltimore police has issued a warrant out for 24-year-old John Callis, the Baltimore the Ravens fan who attacked the two Commanders fans on Sunday. He will be charged with first-degree aggravated assault and three counts on second-degree assault just to let you know. Just to give y'all that update, I know a lot of people were wondering. I didn't want to do like a whole video on that because that's just not my type of information. I like to like do deep dives on. I don't want to feel like TMZ over here or anything like that. But now that we have like an official like good resolution to the situation, I wanted to make sure I updated y'all on that. And also before we go, shouts out to Patrick Quinn for pointing this out. This has absolutely nothing to do with the commanders. This is just going back to me being from Atlanta. I didn't know this until this tweet that I saw earlier today. 2025, we have the NCAA football national championship 2025 we have the mlb all-star game 2026 we have the fifa world cup 2028 we have the nfl super bowl and then 2031 we have the ncaa men's basketball final four i this uh, whoo i know atlanta traffic whoo uh whoo we man that is crazy right there. i can't believe that man but the reason that it does sort of relate to the commanders is that when we finally get our new stadium our new venue that everybody wants to hold events at and all of that type of stuff that will help increase the chances of things like that happening in the dmv area especially specifically dc so just make sure y'all keep that in mind man once atlanta went and remade the stadium completely started over the built the mercedes-benz stadium now that is just so fun to play in i mean when it's hot when the weather's bad when it's raining really cold you just close the roof and you still have a somewhat of a good view but now you're in perfect air conditioned weather i don't understand why a lot of people especially northeast people love being outside and dealing with the weather for football now i prefer stable conditions and then the best team beats the other best team and weather doesn't play a part into it that's that's like a super like out of date old paradigm that's just completely northeast only because you got to think about the fact that most of the players in the nfl are either from the south or west coast if you try to come especially when you combine them together but specifically to just south alone and so these guys play in cold environments and now they're not having fun they're not playing as well as they should that's not good football it's not good football at all, man. I don't get it. So please, the next Commander Stadium, can we please get a retractable roof on it? I want to be able to open it up when the weather is nice. I prefer nice, natural air. But when the weather's bad, man, close that thing up, man. Especially now that you have a quarterback that was born and raised in the IE, Southern California, right outside of LA. Went to college in Arizona. Went to college in Louisiana. He's about to probably experience the first snow he's ever experienced in his life. Now, granted, by the time we get a stadium done, he should be used by, to the cold by then but still man like come on dog it's just i just don't get that silliness at all y'all could never convince me that it makes any sense why y'all prefer to play football games in the snow at all man especially when you have southern players that are making up like 80 percent of your roster and the best talent on your team it doesn't even make sense they're not even happy but yeah man that's the end of this video and the end of a couple of my random rants that i have for this video Shouts out to all of y'all, man. Make sure if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you. Make sure you stiff on that like button, stiff on the subscription button, stiff on the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this. So make sure you stiff on that like button on the way out. Do not leave this video without leaving a like on this video. I really appreciate it. And of course, let me know in the comment section how you feel about all of this discussed in this video, especially a lot of the Cliff Kingsbury quotes that I gave you about Jaden Daniels being ahead and Brian Robinson meaning more to the team healthy than I even previously thought especially like emotionally and mentally also let me know how you feel about the caleb williams getting his award stolen from, from Jaden daniels how do you feel about that i really appreciate y'all again i got Jaden daniels in the back laughing 
because that's how I'm feeling right now, at least. Let me know how y'all feel about it. Again, do not leave this video without leaving a like and be on the lookout if you're an ex if you're a channel member. Exclusive film session on the way tonight. Also, another video for everybody to see sometime later. And I want to give y'all the official update on the Commander's injury report from Thursday. Catch y'all later. Appreciate y'all. I'm out.